Let's be clear. It is only men who are involved in spiking. It's only men who are raping and abusing women after rendering them unconscious. It's a men problem, not a woman problem. Yet we're now in a situation where women are being told how they can make themselves safe, where nightclubs and bars and police and support groups offer measures to help women keep themselves safe. Now, these measures and this advice may be sadly necessary right now because of the danger, but let's be crystal clear. The danger is from men, not from women. And it's men that need to call out the culture which has made this happen, where some men think it's acceptable to view women not just as commodities, but as something to exploit and to abuse. The horrifying growth in spiking linked to rape and abuse is just one extreme symptom of these attitudes and we need to call it out. A BBC investigation in 2019 uncovered over two and a half thousand reports of drink spike into police in England and Wales over the previous four years. Over two and a half thousand. Police across the UK have, ri have rise in reports of spiking incidents, many involving something sharp. And student unions nationwide routinely now report accounts of suspected drink tampering. One woman, woman journalist writes, a stranger's hand unceremoniously shoved up your skirt on a night out has become almost routine for young women. Street harassment, not just cat calling, but crude propositioning and being followed by men who get aggressive if rejected is normalized. She continues, young women are sick of being told to stick together or to watch their drinks when the problem is male violence, not female vigilance. Now, there have been some great initiatives challenging this recently, including the student unions during Freshers Week organizing the big night in, nightclub boycotts, to raise awareness, not just of the risks, but also of the need for, of men to take a stand. And indeed, Swansea University men's rugby team joined the boycott with one of the team members saying, there's this stigma of toxic masculinity associated with rugby boys. We wanted to be one of the first clubs to do something about it because everyone knows someone that this has happened to, and we want to change that. Welsh Women's Aid directed me to the That Guy campaign run by Police Scotland, subtitled, by the way, Better Ways to Be a Man, and which has had personal endorsements from well-known figures such as the Line of Duty actor Mark Boner and the uh, the A-word actor Greg McHugh, Scottish sports stars and others talking about their roles as husbands and fathers to daughters and about importance of talking to your mates, saying not just don't be that guy, as the campaign says, but don't let your boys be that guy neither. And the campaign has been picked up by youth organisations as a way to open conversation with young men over male sexual entitlement and inappropriate behaviour and where this can lead. As Mark Bonus says, we have to examine our behaviour as men and challenge that of our peers. So in closing, can I ask the Minister what work we are doing in Welsh Government with police and community safety partnerships in Wales, but also others, including local authorities, youth services, third sector organisations, as well as nightclubs and bars and entertainment venues, and with organisations like Welsh Women's Aid, to not only raise awareness of the problem and understand the scale of the problem, but to tackle the underlying issue of toxic masculinity, male sexual entitlement and misogyny. We need to tackle the root of the problem, not just the symptoms.